Hey everyone, I think that we are all in agreement that we love brisket, but we don't like paying 10 bucks a pound for brisket. At least that's what I'm paying here in California. It's very hard to find brisket in a grocery store, so I usually have to go uh, to a butcher. Matter of fact, this butcher right here. Adam's Meats out in Folsom. Um, so what I'm gonna cook today is what I refer to as a poor man's brisket. But even now, uh, I'm paying $6.99 for a chuck roast, which is generally what you would call a poor man's brisket. Sometimes you can find it out here for $2 a pound, and then it, it really is a two buck chuck. But just like the brisket, the chuck roast will take a long time. Yeah, it'll take a long time to cook. And the reason for that is because it's almost from the same place as a brisket. Matter of fact, it's found right above it. So looking here, you can see the brisket is kind of down on the bottom of the front of the animal. And the chuck roast comes from this area up here. And it's called the forequarter. And when you look at a chuck, you, you, it, it doesn't hold together, right? Like, uh, like other cuts of meat. You really have to kind of keep it together with your hands. And the reason for this is because, as we can see here, it's part of three different areas of the animal, right? It's, you got a little bit of neck in there, you get some shoulder blade, you get the upper arm, and you can see that it is right above the brisket. So it, it's not the best cut, it's, it's kind of tough, just like a brisket, but it's really flavorful, but you really have to let it cook down. Yeah, it's low and slow, and that's what we're gonna do today. But this chuck, we're gonna make this poor man's brisket, but it's also a great cut if you just wanna grind up a uh, hamburger because it's got all that fat in it, it's really flavorful. It's good for um, pot roast, it's good for like beef stew because all of those things take a long time to cook, right? Like if you're doing, uh, oh, there's my grill, there we go. Uh, so if you're, if you're doing a, a stew, a beef stew, and you got those chunks of the chuck, that's gonna sit in your crock pot all day, right? So. When it's time for dinner, oh man, that stuff is just gonna melt in your mouth. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this cut. Oh my goodness, look at that. So that is a 2.59 pound boneless chuck roast USDA choice. And so you can see how the flying swine, the rub, it's been on there a couple hours now, but you can see just the beautiful color that we're getting here. So I usually get USDA Prime because it typically has more marbling in it. And for a tough piece of meat like this, you want as much marbling in there as you can so that when you're cooking it low and slow, all that nice fat that's just intertwined between the, the fibers and the meat just melts, it renders down, and, and just makes it oh so, so juicy and delicious. Yeah? But that's all right. We're going to make this one work. So I'm using Flying Swine rub and it's a, a an incredibly uh, aromatic rub it, it gives the meat an, an, uh, an awesome flavor right before you even put it on the grill now some people only use salt and pepper which is what you know traditionally they call a Dalmatian rub I just use what tastes good to me yeah and so I I really like this rub uh, you can find it online I'll put a link uh, down in the description but the rub is important for something like this because it's what gives that uh, cut of meat that nice bark right after a couple three hours you'll start to see that bark form and that's what we're looking for yeah so I posted a video last year it was either YouTube or TikTok pro probably both but somebody commented on it and they're like dang dude that looks burnt and it just I don't know it, it like hurt my heart that 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 person doesn't know about bark and, and has never had good barbecue. Yeah, so we're gonna change that today. So we're gonna do this cook on my Gravity Fed 560. I love this grill. Uh, people will have asked me, oh, is that a Traeger? I don't, I don't recognize that. It's not a Traeger, right? But it, it has a lot of the same features that a Traeger has. Like it, it connects to my phone, I can adjust the temperature, I can see the meat probe temperatures. Like it's, it's pretty hands off. And I like that because it allows me to focus on my technique and not have to worry about the temperature. Enough talk, let's get the grill heated up 
Let's get this meat on and let's start cooking. So charcoal is in, we're gonna light her up. All right, so you can hear that fan blowing behind me. I've got the grill temperature set to 250, so it'll probably take uh, 10 minutes or so uh, for this thing to get up to, uh, to temperature. And I just, I really love this grill. I did a lot of research, right? I looked at Traeger, I looked at the big green egg, you know, I have my trusty Weber, and you just can't go wrong with that. But when I started getting to the serious cuts of meat, right? Like really good, like flat iron steaks and briskets. And just, I wanted to, to kind of step up the game. Yeah. So I wanted to be able to get a grill where I didn't have to really worry about the temperature. Yeah. And I, and I like the charcoal, I like the charcoal flavor. And that's something that you just can't get from a Traeger is that flavor right now. They, they have uh, pellets that have flavorings and things like that. But what you cannot do with the Traeger is take a lump of wood like this, like this. This is a piece of peach. I bought this online, a big 10 pound bag of it. And all I have to do, that same door you saw me open to, to light, I can just take a, any piece of wood. And for this cook, I'm gonna use peach. And I can just throw it in there. And there's a grate on top that keeps the wood uh, uh, above all the ash on the bottom. And it catches fire and it makes a beautiful smoke. Yeah, you can't do that with a Traeger, okay? You're kind of stuck using their flavored pellets or whatever you want to use, which some people like. I have very little experience. I have friends that have them and there's mixed reviews, but they like them. I just, they're kind of expensive for me. <laughs> yeah, that was the main deterrent for me, yeah? So anyway, we're gonna wait for this to get up to temperature. Then we're gonna put the uh, cut on the grates and then uh, we'll probe it, and we just wait. All right, so the meat's on, it's probed. Dogs are already going crazy, so we'll just let that sit for a while. Now. The, the first milestone for any cook is always getting the grill up to temperature, right? So it's at 250. The second milestone that we're looking for for this particular cut is 165 internal, yeah, 165. And that's when we're gonna pull it. So we'll actually remove it from the grill. We're gonna wrap it up in some butcher's paper and then we're gonna put it back on. All right, so it's been a couple hours. I can tell I'm in the stall. I'm right around 158 and I've been there for a while. So I'm just gonna take a look at it. I got some uh, water, apple cider vinegar spritz. Oh my goodness, look at you. That is looking good. You can tell it's getting a little dry right here. So it's a good thing it came in. See all the juicy juice up on top. So I'm just gonna take this, squirt it down a little bit. We'll have to come out here about every 20 minutes or so. So it's a double-edged sword. Like the spritzing keeps it moist, but it will also increase your cooking time because now you got the evaporation coming, which cools off the meat. And yeah, that's why they call it the stall. All right, so this has been a really strange cook uh, for me. It's been almost five hours and I just hit 165. Now there is a, a breeze. I did have to adjust the damper in the back, but this thing should have already been done by now. If you just use a general, you know, one to one and a half hours per pound, I mean, this thing should have been done. So um, I just hit 165. Let's take a look at it. All right. So you can see, man, there's a lot of juice there on top. You look at a, some fat back here. And that feels right. That's kind of spongy right there, the little fat pack. That's what you want. However, I am a little disappointed in the bark. Not getting that nice bark I usually get on these things. Um, but you know what? That happens. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I'm not throwing the towel in on this cut just yet or this cook. So let's pull it, let's wrap it, and then put it back on. All right, so there it is, double wrapped. 
uh, put back on the grill. I did put a little bit of beet broth in there so it'll start to braise out. Since it's uh, a choice and not a prime cut, I'm just trying to give it a little more help. Uh, it smelled awesome though. That rub was good. All right, so that's about all we can do for now. I'm gonna shut the lid. I'll put the pro back in, and then we're gonna wait for an internal temperature of 200. 200 degrees, I don't care how long it's gonna take, that's when I'm gonna pull it, and then we'll see what it looks like. Let's see what we got here. All right, so just as I suspected, it doesn't feel as tender as a brisket. And I'm not even gonna, well, you know what, I will. Like I said, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So let's see what it looks like. Really nice smoke ring. Yeah. It's good flavor. I still think this is this is salvageable. So at this point, now of course, you know, the company that we had last night, luckily it was just us and we just ate the sides <laughs> and not the meat, right? But um, there's a couple different things that you can do at this point. Of course, it's kind of too late if you have company and you were doing this the same day that you were gonna eat it, which, you know, most of us would, would do. But there's two things that we can do here. First one is what I call the Arkansas Crutch, and I have it ready to go uh, in the house. And that's where you just put this thing in a crock pot. And probably four hours, and it will just melt in your mouth, I guarantee it. You can also just throw in the towel and make some burnt ends out of it. Yeah, burnt ends are so easy. Once you get it cooked, um, you just slice it up into one inch cubes, put it in a pan with uh, honey, brown, sugar, barbecue sauce, lots of butter, and you just let it cook down uh, for a couple of hours. And I've, I've made those before. You can check out a video on that. Uh, this one, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the crock pot and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's been in the crock pot for a couple of hours. I just probed it and it's 200 degrees. It's definitely done. You can see here that still got that good smoke ring. Like it's really coming apart, really easy. Um, not as juicy as I would like, but could probably leave it in there a little longer, but it's probably about as good as it's gonna get, okay? So, and it does taste okay. So there's a, still a couple different things that you can do. You can eat it as it is and it would be fine. Um, or you could make those burnt ends with it. Okay, so I ended up doing something completely different. Uh, I talked about it early in the video. I don't want to tell you what it is now because my brother-in-law Morgan is here and I just want to surprise him with it. So I did a poor man's brisket, okay? It was a horrible, horrible cook. <laughs> okay. like, like, from my olden days cooks, right? Okay. So I just made poor man burnt ends. Oh, hell Okay, yeah. so here we go. Drill down on this one, camera lady. Oh. So these are so easy so to do. Good. I will post the recipe for this. These are really hot, man. They they just came out, but here you go. Let's try not to burn ourselves. And like oh. I said, so tender. Yeah, it should just melt in our mouths. Well, that is hot. Mm. I mean, that's all I can do oh. to keep from falling off this fork, you yeah? know? Look at that. Oh, man. Woo! So, that is incredible. <laughs> moral of the story, even if you have a bad cook like this one, you can still salvage it. No problem. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hell yeah.